A school, a school committee meeting to order. Will you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And a moment of silence, please. Thank you. <coughs> The listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Please note this meeting is being videotaped for cable. I'd like to first introduce Hannah Flynn. She's here as our student representative, and she was also one of the featured students on our most recent karaoke co car carpool karaoke with um, the superintendent. So thank you, Hannah, for coming tonight and for being and a driving superstar. around town with me. Yeah. <laughs> and listening to her voice. <laughs> Hannah, I know, I gave I don't know how you didn't have earplugs in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> it was excellent. Um, would like to first ask for a motion to approve the minutes for the March 12, 2018 school committee meeting. Move. Second. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. And our very first uh, note on the agenda tonight is our recognition. I'm going to move for this. No, I'm taking a picture. So I'm honored tonight for the second year in a row to uh, recognize our girls' gymnastics team. And I'd like to first, if I may, um, welcome Coach Stephen Cudbert to the podium with me because I would love him to talk about some of the wonderful things that you guys accomplished this year. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Before I do hand it over, I did want to say Mr. Bodwell was more than impressed, he was sad he wasn't going to be able to be here tonight. Um, he was at your championship meet, and one of the things that he highlighted as his most impressed with was how composed you all were, not even throughout your perform your performances or <laughs> routines, thank you, <laughs> especially during the awards when you guys were being announced, and how you just showed, showed what champions you are, and it's just so impressive. So if you could tell us some more about the athletes, and then I would like all the girls to come up if you can help sure. me announce yeah. them. Thank you guys for inviting us here today. It's an honor again um, for a second year in a row. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, we um, went into the fall sectional um, being ranked number one. Um, we had a couple errors, and then we were able to qualify into the state competition uh, for the third year in a row, um, which in my 10 years, I've never made it until these past three years to the state championship. Mm -hmm. And then we won last year, and then we ended up winning again by only two tenths of a point. It really came down to that last event, last girl up. Um, and it was a complete shock to all the team members and myself um, at the state championship that we actually came away with it again. Um, and then for the second year in a row, we made it to the New England championships. Um, last year, we struggled a little bit. We really were just focused on the state title and didn't really think too much about the New England title. This year, we came prepared and we ended up winning for the first time in school history of the New England championships, That's which so were the cool. best um, teams awesome. from Connecticut, Rhode Island, um, New Hampshire. We're all there. Um, <coughs> So it was an amazing season, um, and maybe we'll be back again next year. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Can I, can I, yep. I did practice. I'm not here, so we'll just go. Okay. Yep. Uh, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Madison Brooks. Congratulations. 
Fue bien. Mira. Mira, Benen. Alison Silva. And Jen Silva. Yeah, I was going to take some. And <laughs> so show me. So I want to be in the group. <laughs> 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 no, that was great. That's great. Awesome. All right, now everyone give the thumbs up because, well, no, you got to give them more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And I want to say awesome. that. Several years ago, when um, we got the phone call from Bridgewater Raynham that their members were struggling, so they wanted to know if we wanted to co-op with them because they were afraid that, you know, they may not be able to sustain having a team. And we had a number of girls that wanted to be involved in it. I think it started with a few and it kept growing. And think about what a great opportunity that was and the fact that no one I'm sure could have imagined at that point that you'd be New England champion. So mm -hmm. it's like, that's unbelievable. So savor it and remember it for the rest of your life. So great job and great job representing both, uh, all three towns. Take a brief minute so that you guys can gather your stuff and get home and study. Study, yes, <laughs> study. Go home and study. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, yeah. girls. Congratulations. Thank you, girls. I do. It's it's incredible. I love that we have so many talented students and the fact that we have the opportunity to um, acknowledge them when they when they have such great accomplishments like this one. So very special. So we'll head back to our meeting now. Um, so, oh, right into our superintendent's update with the school choice update. Superintendent's update. We have a number of informational um, things tonight, and the first one is the school choice, as you said. So we went through all of the applications and the grade levels. Uh, we looked at enrollment based on our March 1st um, enrollment data. and looked at what grades we could open and where we had applications. There were several grades that we had to do a lottery and then some that we closed and some that just um, only a few uh, applications came in so that we could accept kids. So currently right now we have accepted 37 new students for the school choice program. We're waiting to hear back because they have uh, a couple weeks to get their confirmation st statement back. Sometimes uh, there's a number of students that get accepted but then have decided to go somewhere else or stay in their in their hometown so we're waiting for that once that happens then I look through and see if there is any more space or if people backed out and I can go to the next group or do another lottery um, so that's excluding kindergarten and first grade because we have not we wait on kindergarten and first grade closer to the end of the year kindergarten after all the kids are registered and then we see what we have and first grade, we usually wait till the end of the year because of move-ins and stuff, and we don't want to overcrowd those. So I do anticipate that we'll probably have space in first grade, but kindergarten, um, we just happen to have a big kindergarten this year. So maybe some siblings, but I don't think it will be as big as we could do last year when we had uh, lower enrollment in kindergarten. So it, it just depends on the enrollments. But um, again, we got over 130 applications for about, you know, 40 to 45 spots and um, it just again shows you that we must be doing something right because really it's through word of mouth that we get people from outside of town that really want to come to the West Bridgewater Public Schools so that's where we are with school choice Excellent. and next we have 
a special guest with us <laughs> this evening. I want to introduce our new athletic director that will be starting July 1st. Her name's Jen Hamill. She currently right now works um, as an assistant in Silver Lake Regional Schools. She was a coach. She was um, a college field hockey player. And she is, I think, really excited to be here. And we're excited to have her. And if you don't mind coming up to the podium, no, just no, no, no. so you can introduce yourself and everyone can see you. <laughs> Good. Well, hello, I'm Jen Hamill. And um, the new athletic director of uh, July 1st. And you guys, I'm so excited. I am. I, I was an athlete in high school. I was an athlete in college, you know, currently working in an athletic um, office. I have children that at all levels are playing athletics, and I think I bring a lot to the table. And I can't thank you guys enough for this opportunity. I'm just absolutely thrilled. The process has been phenomenal. Everyone here has been absolutely wonderful. And I just look, look really, really look forward to diving in here and becoming a wildcat and just becoming part of the West Bridgewater Schools. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, I want to give you a couple updates on some of the other searches that we're that are underway right now. As you know, Sarah is moving to Tennessee in uh, August or so, and so we're doing our business manager search. We had our screening committee meet last Thursday and Friday. We interviewed um, eight very good candidates, and we've narrowed it down to three finalists that will be working. Um, will. Um, smaller group will be interviewing and doing a little more in-depth um, interviewing with the finalists this week, calling references, doing those checks, etc. <coughs> and we're hoping that we'll have a person ready to sign and come on board by the at least the, by the time vacation's over, just because we're interviewing um, Friday, actually. So it might take a little bit longer to get the references and stuff checked. But within the next two weeks, we're hoping that we will have one of them on. And it was great because our search committee, we were all on the same page and looked at and came up with the same three people all on the same page. So we all felt that any one of three will be um, a good addition to the West Bridgewater Public Schools. So we were very happy with the quality of people that came through. Excellent. So that's business manager. The Howard principal search, um, you know that we went out early in January to find um, Peggy's successor because she's retiring. And we went out, we had a screening committee, <clears throat> ended up with a couple finalists and those finalists fell through so we decided that it was early enough so we'd advertise again and if we had enough uh, quality candidates that put in the second time then we would interview again if not we would regroup and say maybe we could do an interim position for a year um, which we had done before so I'm pleased to say that we do have several good applications and Keith and I have been looking at them so I think five or six maybe maybe more um, because they're coming in we have to look at them more closely but we do have actually um, a lot of quality candidates that put in this time around so we were pleased with that so we will be regrouping and interviewing the Wednesday and Thursday after vacation for the Howard School search and then the following week will be the finalists and, and follow that. So I'm hoping that this time around um, it will work out and we'll have someone to fill Peggy's position by mid-May or so, if everything works out. So we're looking forward to that. So it's been, it's been busy in the interviewing department with, with these <laughs> the positions. The HR department? Yeah, in, the yeah. HR, in my HR department. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but okay. any questions about that? So, Mr. Flynn was your representative on the business manager search, 
and Mrs. Sullivan and Mrs. Hume are on the Howard principal search. So, and I think you, you both said you'd want to be on it again, yeah. right? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Questions, comments? No, keep bringing keep in the great Keep people. going. We always do. <laughs> okay. Yep. Give academic and technology showcase. Yeah, at the end of each school year, we have, it started out as more of our end of the year strategic planning meeting, and it's kind of morphed over the years into a showcase of all the great things that we do within the classrooms and with in all the instructional areas. And we've invited the school councils, the strategic planning committees, the school committee, parents of kids and teachers and stuff to kind of just show off the great things that we do in the schools. This year, we decided today, we were talking with our administrative team, we're doing it again in May. Um, it's gonna be Tuesday, May 8th, and it will be at 5.30 and dinner will be served. <laughs> it's a good way to get people out. Um, we're changing it up a little bit this year and, and we don't have it totally, the details planned out, but we think that um, we wanted to change it up and make it a little more user friendly. And sometimes there's so many great things that we're doing, sometimes it's just a long time to be sitting there on those cafeteria <laughs> tables. Yeah. So we're gonna do it actually more like a showcase and have some presentations from the principals, but then set it up more with tables or going to different parts of the buildings to look at different things and Hopefully everyone will go see everything, but you can also pick and choose and it will be set up that way. So you'll be walking around seeing the presentations versus sitting there and people coming up one after another That's after awesome. another. So again, not really, don't have all the details ironed out, but cool. when people started brainstorming about it this morning and saying, let's change up and do it this way, it really kind of got exciting. And we think that way we can actually have more people come if they want to. Because sometimes you put out for teachers, oh, do you want to come and present? Because I walked through your class this year, and this was the best thing I ever saw. And even though teachers are in front of kids all day, they don't always necessarily want to stand up in front of a bunch of parents and talk. They get nervous. Mm -hmm. This way, if they can set up what they did with their kids up in the side of the cafe or in the cafe or in some different area, and people can come over and watch the kids and the teachers present it, I think it would be kind of nice. So. It doesn't necessarily have to be live. Could they set up like yep. a display or they could have a video or exactly. could be any. Yeah, they can do whatever yep. and that's what will come out of it. So okay. we're going to try it this way, but I can see it. I think it could grow into something kind of really big. And um, so we're going we're gonna to keep it to the people that we invite usually mm -hmm. for this one. And then if it works out, I can see it in the future being something that um, could really be open to everybody in the community. We wouldn't serve dinner, Minus but we could dinner. do. Yeah. But then Water. we could do, you know, maybe desserts, like drinks right. and you know, snacks cool. or something oh. like that. But we want to try it and see how it works first. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes so a lot of I sense. I think, yeah. I'm hoping that means we can get more things that could be presented. Mm. Oh, I couldn't even envision like that's an awesome. art display, a uh, technology display. Yeah, like. and that's what they were talking about. Even something, you know, one of the things, now that we did the um, TV media the first year that we had it, mm -hmm. but at that point, <clears throat> Scott was doing a lot with it, but he had just really scratched the surface of what he could do because all the equipment was new. The, the whole room, you know, everything was brand new. They've done so much more and they know so many different things now. And the things that those kids in the mm -hmm. TV media and his interns do are amazing mm -hmm. now. And the, the quality of what they do now is is just head and shoulders over it was the first year. So um, Mr. Bodrell was mentioning we could open that up and people could come in and do different things with the green screen. We could do things um, in the steam commons and just have people in all different places with different things that they've done. So you can walk around, there'll be a listing of all the things I think. Hopefully you can get to all of them, but some people might just want to go to certain ones they're interested, so we'll see. But I, I think it'll be kind of neat. Love so it. that is um, on May 8th, we'll be doing that. And we will send out the invitation and you will please RSVP so we know about the food. <laughs> <laughs> and then the 
presentation, the performance, Mary Poppins. This Mary Poppins. I don't know how many people got to go see Mary Poppins musical this weekend, but the kids didn't. It was awesome, and the singing across the board was unbelievable. It didn't matter if it which character it was the singing was mm -hmm. i thought unbelievable they did a great mm -hmm. job and it was a fun one to go to it was really kid friendly and it was nice that they had that saturday matinee because it was great mm -hmm. for kids but it was i th and that new sound system that we have is unbelievable anyway so it yeah. you know it, it makes it even better but you could tell the kids had fun performing um and it was it was one of the better ones i've seen Again, it takes a few years because they have to get used to all the new equipment and the way that the sound is set up and the way the lighting is set up. So even though it's like, oh, we went into this nice new building and we have all this, it takes a while to learn it because it's, Is it know, different from so the old much. building? Hmm? Is it different? It's from a little different <laughs> than the old building, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the stage isn't going to cave in. Yeah. <laughs> There's not water leaking on the left-hand side with, like, like, safety tape around that you couldn't touch. Um, the, no, the kids aren't walking around wondering if Something. ceiling tiles are going to fall on their heads. Yeah. Although so. that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. So I have a little, I have one of the songs here. Oh, I don't know if you can see it up here. Just because I thought it would be cool to do this. Yeah. Although I liked your Carpool Karaoke preview of um, Mary Poppins that you guys did. That was very nice. I didn't even know what I Good show. And yes, there was a pre preview on Carpool Karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think I horrified them. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, I would say. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way, right, Hannah? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have.
Okay, excellent. Those were a lot of great things. Lots going on everywhere. So under business, we have the 2017-2018 um, calendar change for the June school committee meeting to reflect that we'll meet the same night as the annual town meeting, which is on June 4th. So we had originally had our meeting for the following week. So could um, I get a motion to move our meeting to June 4th? Moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? We meet at 6 o'clock that night, is that yep. correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Aye. Thank you. And ooh, uh, a budget update. So what's going on with our budget? So from our last meeting here in March, we've since met with the um, selectmen in town and presented to them what we had discussed and they had a suggestion but they they thought our budget looked fabulous <laughs> they wanted to give us some more money <laughs> um, we said no thanks no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <What meeting? laughs> <Put that out>. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did have a great meeting with the um selectmen and talked about our budget and presented and explained to them what we had on there um the one thing that they had suggested and what they voted on during their meeting was rather than putting the uh, school resource officer in our budget that they wanted to see that go in as one article or no one warrant and have it go before the town and voted on at town meeting so um, we didn't officially vote on changing our budget um, but then when we went to the finance because we haven't met since then <coughs> then we went to the <coughs> finance committee and we discussed the same thing we presented to them our budget they asked a lot of great questions and had um, you know some concerns about the in general the increases in not only our budget but all the budgets in town and how the increases of all the budgets in town exceed the amount of increases that we have um, in taxes so it's going to be tough um, they also had a lot of questions about the school resource officer and why it wasn't in our budget and it it would be in the um, police budget instead and working all that out but we talked about what the selectmen had voted on and they seem to also from conversation seem to be in favor of putting it on for a warrant and having the town vote on that also so that was I know we didn't that's not the decision that we came up with last time we were here um, I think partially because we thought we could we, we did want to be a part of it and help but at one point I know that was that was something that we had discussed too, putting it on as a warrant and putting it in front of the town. So I don't think we need to re-vote on that because we haven't, right? We haven't heard back from the town yet no, as to what will be. You can, you can vote um, at the meeting right before the town meeting. The May meeting. June no, the June fourth. You can write right before we go down because. Okay. Um, we don't know what they're going to come back with and if they come back and say you have to cut you know last year they came back i think and said you have to cut thirty-eight thousand or whatever right. we then need to uh find the areas of cut and then right. put it out to you guys and then you vote on pre presenting that and we won't know that before the may meeting well most likely we may we may that. not okay because <laughs> if they come back to us because yeah, if they come back to us and say you need to add a hundred thousand dollars we also need to discuss where yeah, we'd want yeah. to add that yeah that's true can you um, imagine having that problem <laughs> yeah that's not going to happen but it would be nice so that's where we are so there really isn't anything for us to vote on because it's outside of our control right now they have right. all the information um i don't know if does anyone have any questions i know i i talked to um one finance no two two finance committee members had um, some additional questions and I talked to them and I haven't heard anything else no um, okay. I think usually they're probably meeting these weeks this week and next week that's when they go through each budget again and they try to help balance the budget based on budget. what our receipts are and what um, all the state money and the tax money and the increases and if there's any growth so the town administrator then takes that and they make recommendations to the selectmen on how to balance the budget and then the selectmen actually vote on 
the budgets. And I know that they need to send the booklet for town meeting out to print in May. So we usually have an idea of what they're going to present end of April, first week in May. So I don't think this will be different. So we could, um, you know, we may have to talk at, at the May meeting about specific cuts, especially if it's a lot of money that they ask us to cut. I mean, depending on what it is. Or ads. <laughs> um, so we'll pr we, we will be bringing it up in May because I think we'll have a, we'll definitely know by then because I think that's May 16th or something. Yeah, because they would have had to already make that decision, so. All right. We also, one other thing about budget, we may have um, also another article that we will be putting on in June if it's the um, Howard School Roof, yep. because we put in for MSBA reimbursement for an accelerated repair project for the gym roof of the Howard School. That's <laughs> the one thing that we haven't done. Everything else is done the gym roof, and um, we did just get notified this week that representatives from the MSBA will be coming out on May 3rd to look at it and um, get information on it and go up there and see so that they can make their decision. And if we get the partnership with them, well, they do a pretty quick turnaround, usually by the beginning of June. If they're going to partner with us and give us some of the money for that, then We'll have to um, have that. As a matter of fact, I think um, when we were at the Capital Budget Committee, didn't I think the town administrator, I think David Gagney said, we should put it on anyway just in case because yeah. we can always take it off. Yeah, pass it without but, action. But, okay. but put it on anyway because it's going to be a tight timeline. So I'm pretty sure that we will be putting Did on for the gym roof. Hmm? Okay. Well, well, we talked about it at Capital. In, in okay. Yeah. So. Next week. <coughs> what will we be asking for, though, if we don't know what? Yeah, they have specific language that the MSBA tells you to use. Yeah. So, um, and what you have to actually put the article on as the full cost, but with the note that the MSBA reimbursed a certain percentage. Okay. So we'll put down like 150, but yeah. the only cost is the town, the 75. Or yeah. yeah. And if <coughs> what we had talked about is if the MSBA says no, not this year, maybe you can put it in for next year, then we all we have two options. One is okay, let's go for the whole 150 from the town, or pull it and then try it for one more year. And most likely, I think we'll pull it and see if they give it a shot the next year, and then we'll deal with that after that because it just makes so. If we can get the money from the MSBA, it makes so much more sense. I mean, that that's a big difference. Right. We pay into the state funds, we might as well. Yeah. So, so that that will be um, on the book, and hopefully the MSBA will. It's going to be a tight turnaround because our meeting is June 4th this year, and they're coming out May 3rd, so we'll see. Hopefully, we'll, we'll find out that day how soon they can turn around and tell us if we're going to get the <laughs> money. Okay. So. All right. Um, Mrs. Hume, can you do an Inclusion Matters update for I us? I can. Um, on March 5th, Inclusion Matters hosted its most well-attended meeting to date, featuring Bridgewater State University professor Dr. John Cash. Dr. Cash spoke on understanding the IEP and educational assessments, and 26 parents from West Bridgewater and the surrounding communities um, attended. The next meeting will be held on Monday, April 30th, from 6 to 7, right here in the um, Middle Senior High School Auditorium. The topic is fostering emotional strength in our kids and will feature Naja Riley, author of Anxiety and Depression in the Classroom, a Teacher's Guide to Fostering Self-Regulation in Young Students. The event is free and open to the public. The Inclusion Matters Board of Directors has filed all of its state and federal paperwork to establish Inclusion Matters Incorporated, the nonprofit organization that will fundraise and do the accounting for Inclusion Matters. And according to the Massachusetts Attorney General Office, we should have our nonprofit, stat, nonprofit status by the end of May. And I was also asked to give a shout out to our own um, Mr. Michael Lazik, uh, Director of Student Services. And um, he continues to offer his full support of Inclusion Matters. Every month he meets with the Chair of Inclusion Matters to discuss improvements to special ed throughout the district. 
As an organization, we are extremely impressed with his efforts to provide professional development to West Bridgewater teachers and create schools that can more substantially address the needs of all learners in our community. <laughs> no, there's no raise. <laughs> and I don't know, Court, if, do you want to say anything about Nadja Riley? Yeah, sure. So Nadja Riley is out of William James College, and uh, she was a consultant for the district previously. And so this year, uh, she's providing a lot of our specialized PD for a lot of our support staff, behavior specialists, school psychologists, uh, some of our special ed teachers. And so uh, she next year will be developing kind of a behavioral health task force with her kind of leading the charge for that. Uh, so I talked to her in the beginning of the year about presenting out at CPAC, and she was she does this all around the area, but she's a nationally known, well-renowned uh, psychologist that's just, when you listen to her, it's, it's just soothing, it's nice, uh, and she really has a great knowledge base of all kids. Uh, so she's a great addition to West Bridgewater. She increases our own capacity of what we can do with our kids here. Um, so moving forward, she's gonna be a huge partner for us, so she's wonderful. So I suggest and I recommend that definitely go check her out. Yeah, so I hope a lot of people show up. She she really is good. She's done work for us before, and she's she's a really great speaker. And what's nice about her is she gives it's practical information. You know, yes, she does research and stuff, but she brings it down to no. This is what you can do to help, and that's what people want to know: the practical things of what I can do. So she's There's very a lot much of like that. It. I think it's going to be well attended. Yeah, that's why we put in the auditorium. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We're going to put the Howard School in the gym, but the roof, so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't fallen yet. <laughs> Shh, don't jinx us. <clears throat> That's okay. not good. All right, approval of policies. Our first policy, Mrs. Young policy 6450, fundraising, field trips, and celebrations. Yes, I, I still need another month on this one. Um, I haven't, I touched base once with um, Mrs. Grinder, and we, had a plan um, to, she was going to send me some um, verbiage to consider for the policy, and we haven't touched base again, again since then, so. Okay, that's fine. Maybe for next month. Plan a celebration together so yeah. you can work on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the concussion policy, Mr. Flynn. <clears throat> yes, uh, we just updated, updated and we'll change just to come. Uh, in compliance with everything, make sure all the forms and everything are all updated that the parents can see. And as the the uh, ever-changing concussion world uh, keeps changing, so just staying on top of it. Uh, special thanks to our trainer, Laura Miller, and uh, nurse, Mary Schmeer, who helped me with this. And um, we're ready to go. Uh, so make a motion to accept it as the changed and move forward. Any questions? Second. Mm. Moved and seconded. Mm. All right, all those in favor of the Aye. changes? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. All right, we have three warrants, and the first two we're going to do by roll call. Can I do the first two together by roll call? Okay. Um, warrant 37A, dated March 22nd, 2018, for $448,411.76. And warrant 39A, dated April 5th, 2018, for $442,420.05. May I get a motion to accept those two warrants? Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? By roll call. Approved. Yes, in favor. I'll go with aye. <laughs> <laughs> Three cues. Three cues. Oh, you had to come up with something else, Jim. <laughs> All right. So that, that passes. And warrant 40A dated April 12, 2018, for $110,367.50. Can I get a motion to approve? Move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Um, we have the public forum. Members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public forum. Anyone like to address the committee? All right. Seeing none, we're going to go on to our upcoming dates. Um, District-wide. April 16th to April 20th, school vacation. Mr. Flynn didn't let me forget about that, or was it Hannah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have school council meetings at the Howard School, April 24th at 2.45, at the Spring Street School, April 26th at 2.45, at the Roselle School, April 30th at 3.30, 
and at the Middle Senior High School May 14th at 3 p.m. The PTO will be meeting on April 24th at 7 p.m. at the Howard School. The Music Boosters will be meeting May 1st at 6.30. The Athletic Boosters April 25th at 7 p.m. And Inclusion Matters, as we've talked about tonight, on April 30th at 6 o'clock in the auditorium at the Middle Senior High School. And I also want to point out, this is an Inclusion Matters, but it, I, well, most children I meet have social emotional needs, so mm -hmm. um, it applies to lots. Mm -hmm. On May 7th at 6 p.m. at the Middle Senior High School Learning Commons. Oh, wait, I messed that up. We said it was at the auditorium? Or it's the a separate meeting. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's the next meetings. meeting, I guess. Oh, There's sorry. also a meeting okay. May 7th, I yeah. guess. Okay, thank you. I'm going to separate that out. The Inclusion Matters is also having the regular meeting on May 7th at 6 p.m. up here in the Learning Commons, separate from the presentation on April 30th at 6 o'clock. At the Middle Senior High School, April 9th, report cards will be issued. And a little more fun on May 5th, the <coughs> junior prom. And the Grand March is that night, and I believe the Grand March starts at 6 p.m. I think it's the proms on May 4th. Yeah, I do too. That was a, mm -hmm. I think, correct? Yes, yeah. May 4th. Yeah, the prom's on the 4th, not yeah. the 5th. Okay, that's Sorry, junior prom. You'll be so. a little late if you come on the 5th. <laughs> 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 yes, the Grand March. <laughs> yeah. So the junior prom yeah. on May 4th, and the, the Grand, Grand March. The Grand March is at 6. Grand March is at 6. Right. I think the students need to right be Right here in the gym. Right here in the gym. Are you sure it's inside? Grandma, yeah, yeah. it's not it's always inside. Grandma, yes, always. Grandma, yeah, I knew that. Like I said, in the middle senior high school gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, it used to be in the town park, but that was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I had a little flashback in yeah. time when I wasn't here. Yeah. Okay. Um, at the Howard School, April tenth. Oh, tomorrow they're going to Nature's Classroom. The sixth graders. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Oh, I've run into a couple people shopping at Target, out on the field, excited. <laughs> for warmth. I guess. Yeah. 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 It's going to warm up as the week goes on. Yeah, when they're coming home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better late than never. Yeah. True. So hey. exciting. Well, it's great for the ticks if they're all bundled up. So it's. <laughs> no, it is good. They, it's safer. No, it's, it's, it's not great for the ticks. It's great to protect oh, it's yourself against it. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like us to finish the. <laughs> April 13th, the Howard School will be getting their report cards. May 1st, reading is fundamental, a book distribution. At the Roselle McDonald School on April 13th, Friday the 13th, they'll be receiving their report cards. <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> April 23rd, <laughs> grade two is going to have the assembly of Helen Keller, sponsored by our PTO. And on April 23rd, grade three, we'll have a presentation, Clara Barton, uh, two presentations, both sponsored by the PTO. And on May 1st, they'll have the Reading is Fundamental book distribution. At the Spring Street School on April 9th, 10th, 12th, and 13th, there'll be kindergarten screening from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. On May 1st, the Reading is Fundamental book distribution. And on May 10th and 11th, the preschool screening. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, May 14th at 6.30, right here in the Middle Senior High School Learning Commons. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.